All right, what's up, you guys? This is your dude, Father Blue, a.k.a. Eduardo, or what a lot of people online like to call me, Eddie. And I'm here today to talk to you about some of the little theories I have about tree monitor nesting um, and laying for tree monitors. Now, side note, I have never successfully bred tree monitors. I am in the process of accumulating all my animals in order to be able to be successful in producing uh, captive bred babies. And so all my theories, all my practices, everything that I do here on this page, channel, YouTube, Instagram, etc., is all on the conquest to be able to successfully reproduce these animals in captivities via my own ideas, theories, and the help of many others in this community that help me kind of guide into the best way of what I'm doing here. Um, and so today I want to kind of show you guys some of the ideas that I've come up with over the years, some that I've had myself, some inspired by other things, uh, some with that have had multiple pushback from other people, some that have been kind of accepted uh, by other people. And as of today, I kind of feel proud to say that I stuck to my guns on this example of a theory that I had on tree monitor laying because it seems like something that's catching wind now, uh, finally, after quite some time kind of pushing this narrative. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys some of the stuff that I'm working on here. So I've been keeping tree monitors for the past three years. Uh, in that span of three years, I've jumped from a collection of two animals that I started off with three years ago to now a group of nine individual animals, uh, five females, four males. In that time, I've gained enough of a group that's so diverse in lineage and bloodline that I hope to never have to run into an issue with inbreeding in any manner with my animals. Uh, and that's something that I strive very heavily. It's the reason why I went ahead and accumulated so many animals uh, that you see kind of behind me and everything like that in order to continue to be able to reproduce these animals. Uh, I have big plans. If some of you guys have been following me for the past couple of years, you guys know what's going on with there. But pretty much is I'm not in the film. I'm not in the range of like being a conservationist by any means. My plans, my ideas with these animals is to hopefully reproduce them in captivity, to distribute them throughout the world and globe to various zoological institutions in order for those people to then have their own captive breeding programs. Is that conservationist by any means? I don't know. That's up to interpretation on whoever is you know listening to this. Uh, I just want to play in my part in kind of helping diversify this species of animals, tree monitors in particular, blue tree monitors in particular, Varnus macrae, the scientific name or Latin name for these guys. Uh, and so I hope by with my efforts and what I'm doing here, I'll be able to hopefully populate the globe with enough animals that are of a different lineage that would never have an issue with needing to import any more wild caught animals, thus leaving the uh, wild caught trade alone. Uh, though these are pipe dreams of mine that I have, and I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm trying to fulfill those dreams. And whether you trust in those dreams or not, that's completely up to you. Again, I'm doing this all for the love of these animals and hopefully to be able to show these guys to my kids and their kids and those kids' kids. Pretty much is what I'm doing and why I'm following this passion and dream. Enough of that. Today I'm here because, again, recently MJ dropped a banger of a podcast on uh, his Trap Talk sessions. And it was obviously one of the most amazing experiences for me to kind of be able to see that live with Brandon uh, from Canadian Cold Blood up in Ontario and also Brian Susan of Sundown Reptiles in North Carolina. Two of the top tree monitor uh, breeders here in North America. Two people that have value their opinions greatly in what they're doing and everything like that. So super excited to hear what they had to say and what they were doing in this industry to help kind of elevate the kind of nature of tree monitor keeping here in the USA. Uh, one of the cool things that was discussed on that podcast was the theory behind elevated nest boxes and nest boxes um, just being different than the norm. For the longest time now, and it's due to kind of like what works in the industry, and we tend to keep this narrative of like, if it works, don't change it in the reptile industry. It's a very unfortunate mindset because it never allows for any progression, innovation, or change in this industry. And we oftentimes regurgitate a lot of the same information and knowledge that's been passed down over the years. As the saying goes, if it's broke, don't fix it, right? Well, since I got into this game, I've always challenge those narratives i've never been someone to be like yeah that works i'm gonna adopt that to those same practices i'm just someone that wants to change and do things a little bit differently and see 
you know, data. I want to see if doing something, you know, against the grain, will it have an adverse effect on these animals? Will it have a positive effect on these animals? And so I tend to kind of push the envelope a little bit on some of my husbandry practices in order to gain that data, that knowledge of what's going on here with these animals. And in particular, the idea of these arboreal animals, granted, they're called tree monitors for a reason because they're found in the canopies in which whatever kind of forest that they're from, be it Batanta, be it Sarong, be it Marik, whatever you have for these tree monitors, again, emphasis on the name tree monitors, uh, that these arboreal animals are laying on the ground in nest bins. For the longest time, ever since I've been a tree monitor keeper and being related into this industry, the biggest narrative that I get pushed down my throat and every other tree monitor breeder's throat is that they lay in nest boxes on the ground. It's something I've never bought, and I'm something I've pushed on the idea of that not being possibly the correct method of laying. Will they lay their eggs in nest boxes on the ground? Of course. It's been proven time and time again that this is something that can be replicated and can be achieved in captivity. There's numerous breeders, and I can name plenty off the, off the top of my head, that have used that playbook method, and it works. MJ himself has recently, you know, ha uh, recently got a pair of Persinas to lay eggs in this method itself. So it's something that works and it's tried and tested and true. But is it the right way to do it? That's where I've always kind of been against that grain and against that narrative. And I've been pushing for the past couple of years on different ideas on how to possibly change the methods of which we're laying or having tree monitors lay eggs. Um, and that's where I got this idea of arboreal termite mounds. I am from the USA, but growing up, one thing that I was exposed to was the natural rainforest and the tropical environment of island living, specifically the Dominican Republic. I grew up as a young kid living off of that island and seeing firsthand something that I don't think a lot of foreigners or Westerners get to see. It was something that I was exposed to as a young kid. And, and what I'm talking about here are, are, are boreal termite mounds. Now, there's something that you guys are probably very familiar with termites, the little bugs that eat the wood in your house and rotten out your wood, and now you have to buy a new home or have your house fixed. To most people's understanding, termite mounds come from the ground, they come into your walls, they eat your wood, and that's it. But in different ranges around the world, termites act completely different than their counterparts here in the USA. Termites in tropical forests, for example, actually lay a lot of their eggs and actually build a lot of their kind of communities inside of trees or on top of trees. They build these large intricate structures off of the bases and off of the canopies of different branch structures up high. And if you don't believe me, here's a cool picture of some right here. Now these termite mounds, I've been predisposed to them from a young age. At a young age, I never understood why they did it. What was the reason behind this? It was just a characteristic of these particular termite mounds on the island of the Dominican Republic. It was cool to notice, and it's something that always stayed with me until an older age. Fast forward, and I get into tree monitors, and again, the, the, the theory of them laying eggs and everything like that in the wild just didn't really stick with me. An arboreal animal coming down to the ground to lay eggs is probably not strong enough to dig a hole but it's going to do that and it's going to risk its life and kind of endangerment to lay eggs on the ground on an island that's recorded to rain more so than any other island of, you know, around it. Indonesia, for the most part, it's such a rainy, wet, tropical island. The idea of an animal laying any type of surface just didn't stick right with me, unfortunately. The, there's so many variables that can come into play. Tree monitors, eggs getting flooded, them getting ransacked by other animals, uh, tree monitors themselves getting killed by being on the ground. Like they're just not suited for that entire environment. Again, these are all theories that I've made myself just from researching a lot about this particular animals and their nature inside of the wild. Um, it's just not something that strikes me as, as, as factual to them. And so I've always led by the idea that these guys are probably living 99%, if not all their lives, in the tree in some arboreal state. A beautiful friend of mine, Chris Applin, recently went down to the, to the island of Batanta and he was actually able to see these termite mounds in the wild. And that for me, when I got those pictures back and got to see them in person, a spark lit in my mind because it validated so many ideas that I had. For the past couple of years, I've been working on this project in order to implement 
some type of redone arboreal termite nesting solution for arboreal animals in this case particularly tree monitors but the ideas can be adopted to all sorts of different animals around the world that lay in an arboreal method these arboreal lay boxes are suspended they're able to be compacted with dirt they're able to hold and retain water and work in the same method a termite mound will work in the wild in my opinion, when you think about it with termite mount, if you've ever seen a termite mount, especially a boreal termite mount, which I've shown the pictures again, but here's another example of our boreal termite mounts. These guys are fully enclosed, completely tight ecosystems built by these animals. Not only are they temperature controlled, humidity controlled, and also protected by the animals, to me, it's just the perfect storm for the perfect environment for any type of animal to have any type of eggs incubated. When you think about the nature of a termite mound, the amount of mass inside of it by these from these little bugs jumping around and running around inside that environment, it's going to cause energy. Energy then transfers into heat, which, uh, as anybody would know, if you think about this enclosed system filled with a bunch of little bugs running around, most likely than not, that air, that mass is going to be in some way hot. When you think about what happens when a termite mound is destroyed or attacked or damaged in any single way, the first instinct for these animals to do is to fix and repair that damage. So you, now you have this environment that's completely sealed, completely controlled, completely perfectly suited for an animal that's going to want to lay eggs, protected and ensure that it survives into its hatching rate. Lo and behold, there is an article posted, and I'll post a link down below, that actually mentions the one and only time ever that tree monitors were documented hatching in the wild, and they came out of a termite mound. This particular scientist documented a handful of tree monitor babies, Prasinus in this example, emerging from a tree mite mound, termite mound, and then the babies proceeded to stay around the termite mound in order to forge the termites as sustenance until they were ready to leave. This is the only known, recorded, documented case of anybody ever seeing tree monitor babies hatch in the wild. No other recorded, documented cases have been shown thus since. My good friend Chris Applin went out to the island of Bataan to, to explore this idea himself. And he wanted to see how it was that these animals were laying eggs, particularly in their environment. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to find any type of demonstrations of them laying on the egg but asking the locals they did inform them that they believe that these animals were laying eggs inside of either hollow logs or in some cases termite mounds though because they have never seen it or witnessed this themselves they couldn't fully tell us how it was happening so the case is still open how are these animals laying eggs that's up to interpretation to me, I believe these animals are laying eggs inside of termite mounds. To others, they believe they're laying eggs inside of hollow logs. In my complete opinion, they're not laying eggs on the ground until that theory is proven true or wrong. When Chris went onto the island and did dirt samples to see whether it was even plausible for these animals to lay in the ground, unfortunately, he was able to document that the ground was too hard packed and contained too much clay for these animals to easily be able to dig burrows and lay into those, into that type of substrate. On top of that, his recorded data showed that he was getting rained on particularly consistently while on his trip. Or further on, sustaining the idea that these animals would probably get flooded if in the case that they did lay eggs in the ground. Kind of furthermore, proving the theory that these animals are most likely laying eggs in trees. But again, I only leave this up to speculation. These are my own theories, my own ideas. So please don't take this as gospel. It's only what I think. And until these are proven, we cannot for surely say how it's happening. So back to where I come into this and why I believe so strongly about this. I, for the past couple years, have come up with a couple different designs in order to help facilitate the idea of tree monitors laying in our burrow nests. And it's left me to, to, to explore the 3D printing community, to explore 3D printing options in order to give us possible solutions to create nesting sites for these animals. And in this case, I came up with something that I've been working on for the past two years. I want to show you guys this now. This item right here is a loosely based designed hide that I incorporated to all my tree monitors just to test out if it's something they would utilize. This item itself is loosely based off of a termite mount. 
The idea of it having a perforated surface, all the holes to allow breathing, all the holes to allow humidity control, and also enough enough closure to allow compact dirt is something that I want to provide some to give these animals a possibility to hide in their enclosures. But we take this idea further with this next item that I'm going to show you right here. This item was completely based and created in order to help further substantiate the idea and theory of tree monitors laying in termite arboreal mounds. Now, I do want to note that this is completely a prototype piece. It's not completely finished yet, and there's a lot more revisions to do before this is completely released out to the public. We've recently reached a milestone in which this item will be coming out fairly soon, and I'm so excited to share this even a little bit with you guys right now. If you watch MJ's podcast tonight, you kind of got a glimpse of what it was as he showed a little bit of a glimpse here, and I'll show you here. He showed a little bit of a glimpse of what I was doing here with the stream monitor on live and was such a blessing for someone to take notice for so many years of work and anguish that I've had on this project. But check this guy out right here. This right here is the 21 inch tree monitor arboreal egg laying box. And now the idea behind this is again, everything that I've described earlier about how a, I believe a termite mound works in the wild has been incorporated in this design. It's fully enclosed. It has three entry holes, one on the top, two on the side in order to give the tree monitor complete access to these nest boxes to dig whatever tunnels they need in order to lay their eggs in a comfortable manner. These mo this model right here was designed to be hanged and held inside of, a inside of an enclosure and suspended, not laid on the ground, but suspended. The idea behind this is that because it's suspended, it'll be able to gradually contain and stay at an ambient temperature relative to what your enclosure is kept at. This project has been two years in the making in order to completely give these monitors an option of natural egg laying to the point where I wanna even experiment with natural incubation, allowing these tree monitors to lay their eggs naturally and incubate them without the help of any type of machinery of any sorts, incubator, digital incubators, etc. The ideas behind this project have been thoroughly thought of. Everything from allowing drainage layers at the bottom to allow excess moisture to escape, to the pre-made three inch holes to only allow the tree monitors to enter and exit as needed, as well as extra ventilation and ports for moisture to enter these termite egg laying boxes. The idea is that once installed into a clay, into an enclosure, it has the perfect environment and the perfect scenario to help incubate as well as have tree monitors lay in this entire unit. This is a project that I'm very proud of and I'm very soon to release to the public. It's something I've kept in to quite wraps because as you can see, once an idea like this is released, it generates a lot of buzz. This is theories that I've been pushing for the past two to three years, though it's only now the majority of people are starting to take notice of something of this being actually possible and something that could be used in further keeping. I still have a lot of development to do. I'm very excited for the future of tree monitor keeping and the barriers that we're gonna continue to push here. I can't wait for future innovators to pop out and for them to have ideas similar to mine and to see what the future of tree monitor keeping becomes. But, but this is one step forward in evolution, innovation, and experimentation with these tree monitors. Again, my studies and my research and everything that I'm doing with this project is in order to further on the keeping husbandry and knowledge of keeping tree monitors in captivity and to hopefully expand that knowledge and share it with the rest of the world. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is a quick glimpse as to what we've been working on. Again, it was shouted out on the MJ Trap Talk podcast alongside with Brian and Brandon. Both had things to say. Unfortunately, the videos that you showed earlier, the picture that was shown earlier didn't get a full case of what it is, but as you can see, this prototype is completely enclosed. If you were to check on the outside, inside as well, it's a completely, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a completely enclosed system with no extra walls or anything like that. The idea is to have a completely smooth surface that can retain and hold water, heat, and dirt to create the perfect environment for these tree monitors to lay in. We're going to keep on innovating. We're going to keep on doing cool things. I hope you guys enjoy this video and you follow the talk. I want to release this so that if anybody had any questions about the projects we're working on, everything can be answered here or you can answer them directly. They can be answered directly by me via messages. You can follow me on Instagram via Father Blue, on YouTube via Father Blue, or even on Facebook via Father Blue. My name's Eduardo, aka Eddie, the guy behind Father Blue. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope to see you guys soon. See ya.